News regarding the world number two, Nelly Corda. It has been confirmed that Nelly will not play next week at the season's first major, the Chevron Championship. The field for entry closed yesterday evening, and tournament official confirmed that Nelly had not filed an entry. Earlier this month, Nelly announced on social media that she had been diagnosed with a blood clot in her arm and that she was home resting. Amy, this is a 23-year-old you know, at the height of her physical power and in this game as well. What's your reaction to this scary news? Yeah, let's just hope it's a sort of a minor speed bump in terms of her health. She's obviously otherwise pretty healthy and young. This was a fairly sudden thing that came up when she was in Ponte Vedra Beach doing some commercial work during the, the Players' Championship. It's kind of disappointing that she's not playing the first major of the year because what last year promised is what this year has not yet delivered on the LPGA Tour, which was the promise of a great rivalry. And the last great rivalry we saw in this game was on the LPGA Tour with Carrie Webb and Annika going back quite a while mm. at this stage. So it's, it's disappointing she's not there. It's, it's not a good week for PGA of America reigning champions. She won the KPMG Women's PGA last year mm. and is not playing the first major of the year in the same way that Phil Mickelson is not playing the first major of the year either. Loss for the LPGA with this budding rivalry with Jen Young Ko and also for Nelly specifically as it pertains to the golf course. She's played very well in her couple of starts there. Uh, lost in a playoff, for example. This is the last year of the LPGA with a major championship at Mission Hills. How disappointing from that standpoint, just in terms of her chasing history. It is. It's also disappointing for the tournament. You know, they've had such a great run there for 50 years yeah. at Mission Hills in the desert. And you would like the best players in the world to be there when you're saying goodbye. They have the best player in the world right there now because Jin Yonko is indisputably mm. that. But it would have been nice to actually have the full complement of all of the top ranked players there. Let's welcome on our Paige McKenzie on this Wednesday for more on Nelly Corda. Uh, Nelly is a, a huge loss to the LPGA. Uh, she obviously traveled a lot at the end of last year. What's your reaction to this news? I, I just can only imagine how personally disappointing this must be for Nellie. Obviously, a scary situation that she has been faced with uh, having this diagnosis and perhaps putting in perspective the, the meaning of golf as it relates to health, but but also when you look at her career, and, and you both mentioned some really great points, the, the trajectory of which she played last year, I'm sure the excitement of getting back, uh, going head to head with Jin Young Ko, and then just having the, the frustration of, of body not cooperating with mind or physical ability. And for any athlete, that's frustrating, uh, but obviously health most concerning and, and travel, as we know, can be very difficult with any sort of blood clotting issue, uh, getting an airplane, so no doubt, uh, just a disappointing diagnosis and situation all around. A lot of folks wishing Nelly Corda a speedy recovery. Much more from Paige in just a little bit. Meanwhile, the LPGA Tour returns from its one-week hiatus to Aviara Golf Club for the 12th edition of the JTBC Classic presented by Barbasol. The event begins the tour's West Coast Swing. See that coverage 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow from Carlsbad, California. Now, Jin Young Ko moved back to number one on the Rolex rankings January 31st, and she did not play in the first two months of the year as she rested her yeah, sore no, wrist. But she I won her first forget. start of 2022, shooting that final round 66 to come from behind and beat Minji Lee and Inji Chun by two shots in the HSBC Women's World Championship. It was Ko's sixth win in her last 10 LPGA starts including five in 2021. And you see this nugget, consecutive rounds in the 60s. It all belongs to her now. 15 straight LPGA record, 30 straight rounds under par. You see the company she's been keeping, Annika Sorenstam, and a major champ in So Young Yu as well. So we thought it'd be nice to do a little Jin Young Co. appreciation and welcome back our own Paige McKenzie. Paige, for more on the world number one, I'm just fascinated how you can even try to put this game, this young career so far, into perspective. It's, it's so hard. And honestly, if it weren't for the breaking news, it seems like every single week within the golf world, whether it's Phil Mickelson, the Saudi Arabia League, or Bryson DeChambeau's injury, this would be headlining what is going on in golf. The fact that Jin Young Ko has been so dominant as of late. Uh, if you go back, just even how she ended last season. She won three of her last four, then won again in the beginning of this year, four of her last five. She's won five times in her last eight starts. So I did a little deep dive into what that looked like. The uh, one runner-up finishes well, two sixth-place finishes. So 
in those eight starts never finished outside top six. Cumulatively, 129 under par. That is a scoring average of 66.9 over those 29 rounds. And look at the very last number. Her greens and regulation percentage in 29 rounds, 83%. That's nearly 15 out of 18 greens every single round. And Damon, that's extraordinary. You have one round of 15 greens, you're feeling pretty good about how your ball striking feels. You have one tournament of doing that, you're feeling pretty awesome. You do that eight events in a row, and that is next level stratosphere for Jin Young Ko. We've seen her perform so well over the course of her career, but in this particular last eight rounds, it has been extraordinary. And I think we didn't get to see the full Jin Young Ko in 2021. Yes, we saw a tremendous fall season, but even that CME Tour Championship, her final event of the year, she never hit a full swing with anything greater than a 52 degree wedge because of the wrist injury that she said inhibited her the better part of May, June, July. So I'm so excited to see her back in action back in the United States this week to see how she continues to ride that momentum. But Paige, those numbers answer the question, what have you done for me lately? Where would you put Jin Young Ko in a more historical perspective in terms of what she has accomplished yet and what is she doing right now in terms of the broader career picture? There's not a lot of players that you can compare Jin Young Ko to because of the watermark that she's setting in some of her accomplishments. But I have to look to the highest watermark in the game, and that's uh, Annika Sorenstam and some of the stuff that she's done. But for Jin Young Ko, that 15 consecutive rounds, that broke Annika's record of 14. That 66 consecutive greens in regulation, that accounts for the 63 that she had in the final event of the year last year. Just extraordinary things. If you consider also that, that bogey-free streak, 114 holes of bogey-free golf uh, a couple of years ago, 13 wins already in her sh short and young career, a couple of those major championships. But if I bring it back to Annika and kind of what we've seen Jin Young Ko do in the last eight starts, where five wins in eight starts, that's over 50% win percentage. You have Annika who has done similar things in her career where she won 10 out of 20 events in 2005. In 2001, eight wins, six runner-up finishes. So certainly we're not there yet. We haven't seen a full season of this kind of win at that clip. But when you look at what she's doing now, it's hard not to say, hey, there's not a lot of players out there you can even compare this to. Mm. In light, Annika Sorenstam, Jin Young Ko often plays her best golf right beside her rival, whether it's Se Young Kim or Nelly Korda or H.J. Kim. She gets the job done. Now, Paige, I have a story you're going to be very, very interested in. News on Tuesday as the Colorado Open announced that the women's open purse will match the men's open purse, $250,000, $100,000 for the champ. Jennifer Cupcho has won, and our own Paige McKenzie as an amateur <laughs> won this event one year after I want to say you were a runner-up, and you won this. I mean, this is remarkable how well you did in the state of Colorado. First, just your reaction to the news that the purses will be equal. It, excellent news that it'll be equal. Also, tremendous news to have this kind of quality purse at a state open. The Colorado State Open, you know, as you mentioned, I played 15, 16 years ago, was always one of the premier state opens across the country. It was a $10,000 payday uh, back then, which was still tremendous at the time. This is just next level. And to see uh, Colorado Open and their sponsors step up to provide equal pay is is also incredible news. Uh, the fact that they value their female participants uh, in the same way. So uh, great news all around. And uh, again, just an, a, a nod of the cap uh, to what has always been one of the best state opens across the country. So Paige, I know you were an amateur at the time that you won, but what would your check have been back then? It would have been it would have been ten thousand. I didn't I didn't cap catch what it would have been as a runner-up the year before, but I would have made a nice little payday early in my career had I chosen to turn pro by before I played. But it, it was a good experience nonetheless, and uh, I've always been a follower of what the Colorado State Open has been doing.